Well, all right, we're getting ready to get started on this motor. I figured uh, build this hot rod. I'm going to go ahead and start with a 420 cc motor. And what I'm doing is what you can kind of see is I've torn apart the entire um, torque converter here. My goal was to come back, get this gear off. This is a keyed uh, 10 tooth gear. And what it does is it slides right there on the shaft. It's got a little key. There we go. The key sits on there, it keeps the gear itself from churning, so um, it turns the shaft and what it was, this belt, this belt turns, or this pulley turns that belt, that turns this, that turns the gear, that spins the rear end. Now one thing I realized is I had kind of the same scenario on gearing. This is the rear gear that I had made and it's nothing more than a hub and a sprocket welded onto it. But let's see if we can kind of get show you. I'm going to show you what I'm doing before I get started. And here's a 12 tooth. This is, I believe, a 12 tooth um, centrifugal clutch that was on this six and a half horse Predator motor that was turning this uh, 12 tooth. So I wasn't getting very much difference in gearing. And I was doing approximately five miles an hour. So what I figured is either A, I need to go with a smaller gear on the rear or go with a bigger gear on the front so what I'm gonna do is heavily modify this I'm gonna literally make my own gear I have a 32 tooth and I'm gonna actually make two of these I have a 32 tooth and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the 36 tooth that's gonna be mounted on here thus it will turn this little sprocket I believe it was 2.61 turns which basically what it means is for one revolution of this gear it's going to turn one full revolution all the way back. We'll turn this gear a little over two and a half turns. So what I'm going to, what I'm guessing in theory is I'm hoping it's going to work practical is that with this uh, high torque, low RPM motor that I should do at least 15, maybe 20 miles an hour if I'm correct. And that's having to deal with the gearing on the rear end of this electric cart that's a 12 to 1. Worst case scenario, I'll keep the 32 tooth here. We'll keep the 12 tooth input shell on the input shaft, and we'll go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and probably drop the gearing and the actual rear end. If I can for, uh, force myself to spend the $300, we'll go ahead and maybe re gear the whole entire axle to 8 to 1. I'll gain a little bit more speed, but I don't want to lose all my torque. All right, what I'm getting ready to get started is. As you see right here, I have a 0 0.195, and what that is, is I don't know if you can see the marks clearly. From the edge right here to this little black mark, or this one, that's the thickness that I need to uh, get this big uh, hub down to. What I'm trying to duplicate, and here it goes, is the thickness on the back side of this, from the edge of the tooth to the complete back. Um, these are easy purchased at, uh, where did I get this from, I was going to say Northern Tool, I know it's not Northern, Tractor Supply. They have different hubs, different hubs, uh, hole sizes, the keys, and you literally find what size gear you want, what size hub, and you make it work. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and um, take this over to my little vise that's not really bolted down yet, but I need to use it. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take these set screws out, there's two of them, and we're going to literally lop it off. As long as I can get this surface basically somewhat flat, it doesn't have to be the best, it's not going to throw off balance or anything. I'll go ahead and get this thing chopped <clears throat> and worry about welding the gear up. So I guess uh, let me go ahead and mount this up and uh, go ahead and get my saws all out because I don't have any machining tools right now. So we'll go, go ahead and lop some thickness off of this Boy, sucker. i got to say this is... Uh, definitely tedious I've got my old made in the USA uh, the oil can with some cutting oil and what I've been doing is literally <clears throat> just holding this thing steady right on my mark trying to go straight down keep the blade from wanting to tilt um, it's the only way really I can do it there's no other way I have to do it so sometimes you know doing it by hand is just as good as machining well I take that back, except machining is going to be more precise. So I'm just double checking everything, make sure I'm not getting off my marks. And what I'm going to do is go so far down, 
to trying to stay on my marks and that's why I went ahead and pre-marked it. I'll clean this thing up, I'll unclamp it, give it a twist and keep slicing and I'd rather have it a little hair too thick than uh, have it too thin. So I guess let me continue on and I'll be back with you guys. Well here's what I got so far, I'm like literally halfway, a little, about halfway, a little more and I'm just eyeballing it just to check the thickness. Um, worst case scenario, I might have to take this over to my belt uh, sander just to level it out and what I could always do is put uh, some washers behind it to shim it just right. Um, but like I said, I'd rather have a little bit extra metal to deal with than too thin. And I'm trying to keep my cut as straight as possible. So what I've done is I've took it and I've kind of rotated it around. I'm going to start from this side going down and try to complete this cut. Well, I think we're about all the way through, so we ain't got the pry bar. Oh, and there she goes. Oh, excuse me, guys. Let me while I pick up my little piece. Oh. And that's what I got. Um, it has a hair thickness on one spot versus the other, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go take it and get my digital calipers out, and we're going to see... Here's the other half, and you see how much I've actually removed. So it's not 100% even, but it's close enough. And I need 0 0.95 as thickness. I'm going to go ahead and measure this out, and I'll be back, right back with you guys. Alright, so what I suspected, I have varying thicknesses. Um, right here where I made the line is going to be 0 0.9, I'm sorry, 0 0.197. So I'm a couple of thousandths thick right here so what I mean you what I went ahead and did is mark that and what I'll do is put it right here on this belt and I'll go ahead and sand it down so I could try to make this more uniform so we'll go ahead and kind of grind that down and make this more uniform and really that's really the major thickness I need so I'm just gonna knock these high spots down and um, get this flat as possible as long as this hole is dead perfect round it's not going to really create a wobbler of sorts, but I just want to knock this down to get it as flat as possible. And without having machining tools, I mean, it's, it's still kind of creative to just make whatever you need to make and make it functionable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that without really killing your ears, because this, uh, this does get loud on this tool. I apologize for the sawzall, but I figured since I was going to be right there at the end, why not go ahead and show you guys what I'm exactly doing, how. So let me go ahead and get this thing uh, flat as possible. And I'll keep double checking it with uh, my digital calipers to make sure I've got it within a couple of thousandths of where I need it. And I should be going, uh, good to go for the next step. Alright. Change tactics. I think my, uh, my idea definitely worked. Instead of running it on the belt sander, I quickly dismissed that idea. I came back to uh, my non-bolted down uh, vise. And what I did was I grabbed uh, 80 grit flap wheel, grabbed my Harbor Freight uh, digital caliper, and I'm um, hoping that you can see that, 0 0.195. So I set it down to the exact thousandths, right where I needed it, and uh, you know what, let's grab. For not having a machine shop, I think I can do stuff by hand pretty well. Um, that's the only thing that you can tell is like there's a little nick right here, but other than that, she's to the right thickness all the way around. Um, doesn't deviate, it's literally on the thousandths of an inch. I mean, I'm pretty well sure if you put this on high-tech equipment, I might be a hair off somewhere. But for the most part, I took multiple readings all the way around and the thickness looks like at this edge is going to be right on. Um, you can tell definitely it's nice and smooth. Got a little couple swirl marks in there. I thought it looked kind of cool. So I guess the next step is going to be bring it back here. Let's get this thing out of the way. This thing is extremely hot right now. It's about to even get hotter because the next step is take my 32 tooth gear. Well, 
of course the hottest part that I need uh, to mess with is going to be extremely hot but go ahead and I need to put this through here there we go I need to go ahead and weld this around and that's basically my gear right here that's um this is basically supposed to imitate that right there just the only difference is like I said it's going to be is I'm going from 10 tooth to 32 tooth so um, after making this I should have went ahead and bought two of these hubs so I go ahead and cut another one down and go ahead and get it down to right thickness and bought my gear I'll go ahead and do that this week so um, I can play around with the different gearing but 32 tooth um, definitely just about got the gear going I guess I'm going to set the welder up and go ahead and weld this sucker in and um, see how she looks like on the motor all right got the old harbor freight welding card out just bought this thing kind of like it so far so i'm still testing it out see how i like it so far it seems like it keeps everything convenient now i guess it's time to weld this sucker up i uh, just want to make sure i can get this thing grounded without losing my gear off the table i guess it would help to get the other welding glove on Hell, I guess it's time to weld her up. As long as make sure she's got to stay flat against this hub. Let's put a couple tack welds and get this thing going. Not bad. Got to finish welding it, but I have an official, official uh, sprocket to go on the on the hot rod uh, golf cart. I guess let me go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and film it. I'm just I'm going to go ahead and finish welding this off camera, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, got it done. Got a bunch of uh, slag everywhere, so I clean that up. It's fully welded. So that would just go slide right on here, right onto the main shaft all the way down. It's going to be keyed, so it's going to be locked. Once uh, the torque converter kicks in, it spins your belt. It's going to spin this free spin in shaft, um, which actually will spin from this belt to this pulley, which in turn spins this. Now the problem I'm going to have, and I've already known this, pull the key out of here. Once this thing's all the way back, you notice there was a slot cut here, I guess, for various uh, pulley or uh, sprockets. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the flap wheel. I'm going to knock this stuff off right here. We're going to knock this about halfway back. Go ahead and kind of measure it. I had just a plain gear back here, and from what I gathered, so you can kind of get y'all guys in here. Right about where this line is. I'm going to take everything out in front of this, and all I'm going to do is grab the, um, let's put the hot gear down. Let me see. We're going to grab same um, flap wheel 80 grit, and I'm going to go through and just grind all these flat. Try not to take out the strength of this uh, aluminum plate, but I'm going to have to create some kind of room so that way the chain and everything, when this thing's all the way back, will have... Uh, room to spin around so that's going to be the next step since the gear is done time to go ahead and get the the angle grinder back out i'll plug this um, exhaust port up and i guess it's time to go ahead and grind this down and get that part taken care of so i guess let me go ahead and get set up for that all right guys 80 grip flap wheel you noticed uh took quick care of this the, like this top one easily came to like right about here so what I did was just use it to sculpt this thin aluminum, I'm sorry, not it's thick, but soft aluminum is what I meant to say, and I just sculpted it, so I kind of come from a high point and kind of give it this little sweepy motion in, looks good to me, um, 
allows my gear to have plenty of movement in here uh, with it set back where it's supposed to be and the chain itself won't hit so I didn't take the integrity out of this too much so I'm happy with this so we got that done uh, with the slide the gear on let me bring you over here Oops, I apologize guys so came over here I had my gear try to get it on and I got it right past the threads and what it does it goes up in thickness of hair and this is supposed to be dead on 5 8 to match the shaft I went ahead and already and took a file and filed out the keyway just a hair more um, to open everything up so I want it to fit comfortably on there and tight but not sloppy so but right now it's super tight what I'm having to do is take a, a file I'm gonna have to do this one hand just so I have to hold my vise and what I'm doing I'm just gonna go ahead and file all the way around I want to open up this hole just a hair uh, I'm not trying to remove too much material just trying to knock it back a little so I can get it to fit tight but actually go on there without being super tight and kind of binding up as it's going on so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that just with a simple round file these are some nice American made ones I picked up at a flea market uh, a while ago I'm going to go ahead and do that <clears throat> clean it up with a file and I'll get back to start assembling that torque converter again well, alright guys <clears throat> Finally got the gear mounted, uh, took a lot of filing, um, that hole was super tight. What I did was go ahead and, uh, got the chain on here just because I was testing something. But the keyway and uh, the hole itself, I went ahead and I had to really file it out. Um, it was stuck. It wasn't, gonna, it wasn't going on smooth. It's not what I wanted. So I went ahead and kept fidgeting with it until I got it. Let me see. We'll go ahead and take this rag out of here now that I'm not grinding the aluminum. But you can kind of see right in there has the same exact gap that it would um, with a smaller with a smaller little gear. Same exact gap. So I'm so happy about that. I'm stoked. Look at this too. <clears throat> I have the pro the enough chain clearance, which I could have left it up more, but. I definitely wanted to go ahead and just cut this back. Um, so I got the new hot rod gear on here. I shy, it looks like I do have the proper clearances all the way around. So the next thing I guess is, uh, matter of fact, let me get these let me get these parts cleaned up and let's go ahead and re reassemble this thing. <clears throat> 